Now we're moving into the section of chemistry that's all about the math. We call this stoichiometry, and it's the mathematical relationship between reactants and products in a balanced chemical equation. And for some students, this is the worst part because they uh, don't have a strong math math background, and they feel frustrated trying to sort through this. I'm going to try and show you how to do these using the same method that we've been using for all of our calculations so far with the fence post. And if you find that that's not working for you, let me know, because sometimes students that are comfortable doing ratios can take another path using ratios to do the stoichiometry. So you let me know what works for you. First thing we do is we start by looking at our balanced chemical equations and we pay attention to the coefficients in the balanced equation. The 2, the 1, and the 2. Now typically we don't write the 1. There's just nothing written there, but it's not a 0 and it's important to remember that. So when we look at this, as a beginner, we start thinking in terms of molecules, like it's two NO molecules and one oxygen molecule makes two NO2 molecules. But in order to be successful in this section, you need to think about this in terms of moles. We already introduced the concept of the mole, that a mole is a group of atoms. And just like you wouldn't go to the bakery and order half a donut, but it's okay to get half a dozen donuts, half of the group of donuts. We wouldn't have half of a molecule, but we could have half a mole of molecules. So that opens the door to using numbers that are not whole numbers for coefficients in balancing equations. Now, most of the time we can get by with our whole numbers in Chem 101, but I want you to start thinking of these numbers representing moles. So I have two moles of NO and one mole of oxygen and two moles of NO2 because the atoms are so tiny we don't do reactions with the atoms. Now, we can use the coefficients in the balanced equations to make conversion factors, just like we've made conversion factors out of other two-part units. So I can write things that are conversion factors that look like this from my equation. Two moles of NO uses one mole of O2. Or I could say two moles of NO2 is made from one mole of O2. Or I could look at the relationship between the NO and the NO2. So we can use any two things in the balanced equation and write a conversion factor or this ratio. It can be two products, two reactants, or a reactant and a product, but we can only compare two things at one time. Now, uh, we remember that we've talked before about the law of conservation of mass when we balanced equations, and that says that the mass of all of our reactants added together should equal to the mass of our products. Now, does this happen all the time, 100%? No, not in the real world, because maybe you spill something. But theoretically, it should, and if you were able to capture everything that slopped out of the beaker or that you spilled on the floor, then we would expect to see this conservation of mass. So now we're going to start um, looking at these examples and just finding the ratios between them, and then we'll do some math with this. So we'll look at this first one. This equation, I said already, I could have two moles of NO for one mole of oxygen. I could have two moles of NO2 for one mole of oxygen. Or I could have two moles of NO for two moles of NO2. And I just choose whichever two things I'm interested in. Now, how do you know what you're interested in? you read the problem, and the problem will say, how much of this can you make from that? So the this and the that are the two things you're interested in. So let's look at this one. 
What do I do here to start off? Is this equation balanced as it's written? No, it's not. Um, when I look at this, I have three oxygens on the left, and I have two oxygens here, plus two is four. So some, what? Now I have NaNO3. I have two here and two in the oxygen, so I have four on the right. So sometimes when you have an even number and an odd number, an easy way to start is to multiply the odd number by two. So I'm going to put a two here. Now I've changed the sodium, so I'm going to put a two here for my sodiums. I now have two nitrogens and two nitrogens, so I'm good. Now I just have to see, did that fix the oxygen? Well, two times three is now six oxygens on the left, and I have two times two is four plus two, so that did solve the problem. So now I have a balanced equation. So now that it's balanced, what factors can I write? Well, give me one factor, front table. Two moles of NaNO3 per Why three moles of oxygen? What's the coefficient right here? One, right? To one mole of oxygen. Someone from the back table, give me another uh, ratio that I can write here. To two moles of NaNO2. So we can write a lot of different factors, but it always has to be between two things. So now just take a minute at your seats. You balance that bottom equation and then write down all the factors you can think of.